on a bike trip and hopefully she's pedaling right now and doing okay <laughs> so I'm filling in for her um, just a couple announcements that I have is uh, we have permission from consistory uh, Laura McElhaney Keller she owns Keller's nursery she, her mother is Marilyn McElhaney and Laura's kids um, used to bring the bunnies when we had our Easter bunny breakfast they were one of the first besides Oreo who was Dave's bunny but um, Laura McElhaney brought them she's going to bring her 4-H group here she has a stem group that works and they provided the pumpkin golf at the pumpkin fest last year and they need to refurbish it a little bit it needs cleaned up and she needed a space so she's going to use part of the youth room to do that and her kids will be here um, for a few Tuesdays before Pumpkin Fest. So you might see that door close and it's just because their little golf thing is in there. So we're glad that we can help the kids get their golf, um, pumpkin golf ready for the Pumpkin Fest. And our next garden club will be September 9th. And I still need somebody to volunteer to help do the bank for me. Um, I still can't stand. <laughs> it was Kay and I did the um, daylilies out front under the sign, and standing still, even on that little bank, it was like that hedge clipper got real heavy. But we got those done. So if you can help, uh, September 9th, 8:30, I provide donuts. You can help Don with the donuts. He appreciates the donuts. <laughs> so I, I bring something. You can have a cup of coffee before we start. But if somebody could help me with that, I would appreciate it. And is there any other announcements? Yes? Amy. Yes. That's 11,000 views for the bell choir. Second thing, um, if anyone has a desire for nautical decorations, uh, I have loaded up the rummage sale with beach nautical theme. Anything that you could possibly wish for is down there in the basement. So feel free to look around. Blue Kangaroo News. We are open this Friday. Um, I'd like to have some volunteers because it's time to start our switch over. We've already switched rooms somewhat. The men's room we're going to try and switch back into, I think, the patriotic room. So anybody that wants to help, good. 9 o'clock or after, we're going to just do it the same day as we have people here. So this Friday, Kangaroo Closet. Any other announcements, Pastor? Um, just a reminder, we do start our rehearsals this Wednesday. Yes. So, bells. Um, now it's on. Um, bells and our worship team and choir starts this Wednesday, so feel free to come and join us. Um, so, just a, just a little note on um, today. It is our last day for God and Tractor, so of course, in 
in our my in a, my up updated second updated um, bulletin, I did put out. You know, will I be wearing my um, overalls? And Rich said, "Are you going to wear your overalls?" And I said, "I don't know. I really haven't thought about it. I just put that in the in the update." And so he said, "Well, do you have overalls?" And I said, "Well, yeah. I have these nice white ones, and they have like." blue and black stripes and they're really cool as you see every Sunday I'm, when I'm on the tractor you'll see them well Rich said but those aren't really you'll see them at the call to worship and um, he said but those aren't really overalls and so I said well I think they're overalls and so he proceeded to go on to Cole's website and lo and behold <laughs> Saturday he went out and picked up a pair of overalls for me so I'm wearing them because Rich went out and was so kind enough to go get me a pair of overalls. And you look so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Any other announcements? Gary. I still have one of the tickets left for the uh, fish dinner. Uh, tickets so for the... If you know anybody, um, get all of me. Okay. Fish dinner, walleye dinner. Many people helped catch that, those fish that we're going to enjoy. So if you would like tickets, see Gary after church or Nancy. Or just call the church and leave a message and they'll get information to you. Yes. Outreach meeting after church. Yes. Outreach meeting after church today. Anything else? Well, I'll leave you with a little quote from a, as you know, I'm a, um, a farmer's daughter. And so this quote um, took me to heart. It's from a Brenda Shope, and she's Canadian. She's a farmer, speaker, and author, and she wrote, her grandfather would say that once in your life you need a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, and a preacher, but every day, three times a day, you need a farmer. Let us begin to worship. Agreed. The peace of God be with you. And also I invite you to share your sign of God's peace. peace. And now, for those who are able, I invite you to stand and join with me in rising.
There it goes. It worked. Just had to turn it up a little bit. This is the day that our God has made. God renews us and revives us. In the silence, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. God, send your God, send your spirit on us as we worship you. You may be seated. I invite our young people to come and join with me. I'm just going to sit down here with you guys. So how was the first week of school? All right, better than you expected or worse or yeah, the same? about what you expected. Any highlights? It was school. It was just school. Well, today I have some flower seeds. I'm going to give each of you one of these. Since we're in school mode, here's one of these. Can you um, count how many seeds are in there? Uh. No. Open your thing up. Let them fall in your hand. Uh, a lot. It's a good number. Look at all those seeds. Look. There you go. Look at all those are seeds. Each one of those is one seed. Did you get it broke open, Brady? In the process. Yeah, let them fall out in your hand. You think you can count all those? No. No, there's because there's look, there's like a my hand's full of them, and that's from one flower bloom, blossom bloom. So what happens is, is in the when it was flower planting time, the end of May, I planted seeds. I planted lots of these seeds. And these are marigolds. And um, so from one of these seeds, you get one marigold plant, right? Okay, so, so look at how many what marigold plants you can get from here. And then from that one marigold plant, it had like, eight blooms on it. So if you imagine from one seed, we got this much times eight. You get a lot of seeds from one plant, don't you? From one seed I planted, we get all of these seeds. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, so pretty good production and, and productivity. So just think about that, and today in our lot, and we're thinking about the harvest is plentiful. And so when we go out and harvest, if for every stock we get this much, this many seeds, then we can plant these, all of these seeds, and all of these seeds, and in a couple years, how many plants will we, how many flowers will we have? A lot. A lot, a whole flower bed, won't we? Yeah, a whole flower bed from one seed. So in our lives, Jesus wants us to go out and harvest. And what he means is I want you to go, he wants us to go out and share his love with people and to be kind and to do good things. And whatever we do, for each act of good thing or love that we share, then those people, each one of the people we share love to, go out and share to another, and it just multiplies. And that's how God's love is spread. But also think about every time we're mean to somebody, it also multiplies. So when we want to harvest, we want to harvest good fruit, love and kindness and goodness. And when we share that, then others will be encouraged to share it and we'll fill our communities and our world with goodness and love. 
sharing God's harvest with others. And that's how it multiplies and grows. So this week, I want you to be mindful of your actions. And remember, every time you're loving and kind and do something really good, that it multiplies like all of these seeds. And by the end of the week, you, you, you're one, you're one person, but your love will have spread to many, 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 many people. Okay? So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love, for gifting me to share that love so that it multiplies and grows. Amen. Thanks. I'll put these seeds back in my bag, I guess. Would you like to carry them back to your pew, or would you like to put them in there? <laughs> put them all in there. All right. Very good. Unless you want to grow some marigolds. Do you want to grow some marigolds? Okay, that's fine. All right, you guys can go back to your seat then. Let us stand together in our, and join in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Jesus, you taught about seeds in good soil. We desire to be good soil so that we bear the fruits of your spirit. Your harvest is plentiful, but we don't always desire to do the necessary work. We ask you continue to grow your spirit in us. Amen. Jesus plants forgiveness and love into our lives so that we may grow in our faith and ministry. You may be seated. We come into your presence here in this holy place. We know that you are always present with us, but today we join with others, with one another as people of faith, sharing our stories, our experiences that we have with you, God. Sharing your love with one another, through smiles and encouragement and friendliness, openness and welcome. We thank you for the welcome that we experience from you each day as the sun rises. Even on the days that are cloudy or it rains, we can experience your welcome in different ways. For those who have shared their love, your love with us, we give thanks. For the ways that we've been able to share your love with others, we give thanks. We pray for the farmers as they have been harvesting and waiting for some of the crops to grow. Farmers who have lost crops this summer due to drought or flooding or natural disasters. Those around the world who are hungry and awaiting the food from harvest. We give thanks for the food pantries and those agencies to, that help to give out fresh fruits and vegetables to those who can't afford them. For the migrant workers and others who help the farmers to harvest their crops. Thank you, God, for good soil, for being our master farmer, for the many ways that you grow in us and plant seeds in our lives, for the seeds that we plant along our lives. We are thankful, God. In all of our blessings, we, get, we have joy. The joy of Tuesday night and being able to play at PNC Park and to be there as a church family with friends to support one another. We also, though, know that there are those who are in need. We pray for all those in need for whatever their needs are. For those who are sick, we lift them up. For those in the hospitals, for those who are battling with cancer, for those who are facing 
end of life. We pray for them to give that you would give them strength for all those who are helping to care for loved ones who are sick or, or have long-term illnesses. We thank you for the care they give. We pray, God, for your healing. We pray for our world and our country as we continue to see violence around, for the natural disasters that continue to happen one after another, and for those who are trying to pick up their lives amidst the rubble, amidst the ashes, amidst the floodwaters and the muck and the mud. Thank you, God, for being with us in all times of our lives. For our Savior, Jesus Christ, who continues to lead us and guide us, to walk with us and teach us. We thank you for your spirit, ever near, ever present. We thank you for Jesus and how he taught us to pray. And we pray now that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So our, our middle hymn, um, if you'd like to turn in page 528 in your hymnal, you may do that. It is a new song, and I know it's always hard to do new songs um, because we don't know them, and, and, but this song really kind of fit today with today's harvest, and we're really not going to sing verse 3. Um, so, yeah, so the bad news is we're learning a new song, and that's always hard. But the good news is if you look in your hymnal, it's also in Spanish. And we're not doing the Spanish. <laughs> we're doing the English. So um, the, the tune is like from you are the seed to the day, and then the tune goes back the same, so we get to repeat the tune and just change to some new words, and that's the verse 1. And then the chorus does the same thing. It, it's a, refer, a, a tune, and then we repeat that tune. Um, so we're going to do the verse 1 in the chorus. trying a new song. Yes, today is the last day of our summer revival, and we have learned a lot about God and tractors. We've experienced God in many ways. 
Last Sunday, we experienced God through the exhilaration of going full throttle on our tractor. Sometimes, no, we don't go full throttle. We don't lean on the spirit. And other times, we're just feeling that breeze. Okay, so, no, I, I wasn't going full throttle. But it was full th my full throttle. But Rich, on the other hand, went full throttle at Living Waters, and he's going to come up and share his story. You can um, just come right over here. How's that? The uh, <clears throat> second summer that I worked at Living Waters, our camping season ended the middle of August. We then had a two-week break where there was nothing going on, and then Avonworth High School was coming in to have their band camp at Living Waters. Um, I had to go back to school, so I couldn't be there for the band camp. So it was decided that everybody would get a two-week vacation, except for me. I would stay at the camp, and I would get ready for the band camp. Now, the most important thing I was to do th during my two weeks there was to cut the meadow. And Glenn said, wait till the end of the second week because we want to make sure that the grass is real short for when the band camp comes. Well, during the summer, Glenn was the only one who was allowed to ride the tractor. We were not allowed. So none of us knew anything about the tractor. So the day before Glenn left, he gave me a tractor driving lesson. Now the tractor had a hand clutch. So what you did was you put it in the gear you wanted and then you lowered the clutch and the tractor took off. Glenn said to me, whatever you do, don't take the tractor above first gear. Well, it came Thursday, so I went down to mow I put the tractor in first gear, and I made one revolution around the meadow, and it took an hour. <laughs> so I got back by the dining hall, which is where I started, and I said to myself, it's going to take you for forever if you try and mow this meadow in first gear. So I put the tractor in fifth gear. And I pushed down the clutch, and the tractor went up on two wheels <laughs> and shot most of the way across the meadow, and I was heading right for the little thing of trees that separates the meadow from the creek, which has looked like that's where I was going to end up. Somehow God helped me, and we managed to stop the tractor right before the trees. I then put it in first gear and finished mowing. <laughs> So unless we have lots of hot and dry weather, it seems like it's always time to mow the grass. It's not always harvest time, though. We harvest after the seeds have been planted and that they grow and that the plants have blossomed and that the fruits then and vegetables and whatever we've planted then grows to where it's ready to be picked or harvested. So our scripture today is about um, planting and growing. So it's from Luke 8. It's in various um, Gospels, but we're going to read the Gospel in Luke 8, and I'm going to start with verse 4. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Still other seed fell on good soil. A hundred times more than was sown. 
So I'm going to share you um, Jesus' modern day version from Pennsylvania. Okay. <clears throat> A person goes out and scatters lots of seeds. The deer and other animals trample on them and eat them. Flower garden number one. Some seeds were planted in flower boxes. They would have withered from lack of moisture if they hadn't been watered with rain from the rain barrel. Other seeds were planted not in the best soil and were plagued by weeds and the deer who, and deer who every time the plants grew a little, the deer came by and ate them. Except for the zinnias for some reason. And I might add a, a, an asterisk, this year, for the first year ever, they even ate the marigolds. My marigolds are this big there. Other seeds were planted in good soil near the protection of the house, and flowers were plentiful and beautiful. Yes, we can understand this um, parable. We know about rocky clay soil if you live here in Pennsylvania. We know about no rain and abundance of rain wherever we live. We know about thorns and animals, particularly deer. We also know the times of harvest. At times, the harvest is plentiful. So what do we do during those times? As people of God, well, we share that harvest with others. How many times has one of the neighbors said, hey, could you use some green beans? Or can you use some cucumbers? Or can you use, this is always the one, zucchini. <laughs> yeah. And of course, everybody, no, not everybody needs zucchini because they already have their own zucchini because zucchini grows plentiful around here. But we share that harvest. The disciples knew about the things about this parable as well. They knew about planting seeds, but they knew that Jesus told this parable as a spiritual meaning and they really weren't getting it. So they asked Jesus to explain it. So we're going to now read his explanation. This is the meaning of the parable. Those along the paths are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be, see, and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. But as they go on the way, they are choked by life's worries and riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by perseverance produce So Jesus said that the seed is the word of God. So the Bible bears witness to that word of God. The word of God is the message of Jesus. The story of, Je of what Jesus says and does. The story of God's love and that we matter to God no matter what. The word of God tells us that we have meaning and purpose in our lives and that there's also grace and forgiveness and hope. The word of God is sown into our hearts so that we will bear fruits of harvesting love, of loving God, loving others, doing justice work, loving kindness and bearing fruit. Jesus said, but some of the seeds fell on rocky ground. People heard about Jesus, but it's like blah, 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 blah. You know, the message just bounces in and out and all around, but they don't really hear it. Some people hear about Jesus, and they're so excited, they want to follow Jesus, but they have no roots, and their faith is shallow, so their faith dries up and withers away. Other people hear God's word, but Jesus' message is choked out by other stuff. So there was this husband and wife who owned a farm, and the husband was really good with agriculture, so he went out and actually did the farming. The wife was really good repairing equipment and really good mechanic, so she took care of the mechanical stuff. So one day her husband was out harvesting or working in the fields, and he comes in and he says, um, honey, I'm sorry, but I gotta tell you, I have water in my carburetor. And she says, what? You have water in your carburetor? 
how can that happen? And he says, she said, are you sure? And he said, I'm positive. I have water in my carburetor. And she says, you know, that's, do you, do you even know what a carburetor is? Do you even know where in your tractor the carburetor is? She says, that, wait, hold on, let, let me go see. Tell me, where's your tractor? I need to see it. Her husband said, well, that's the problem. It's in the middle of the pond. <laughs> he did have water in his carburetor. So the tractor's carburetor can't work because it's surrounded by the water in the, that drowns it. So we want to live out our faith in Jesus, but worries and money and possessions and things around us, just kind of things that, all the things in our lives that take up our time, that entertain us and other stuff, it's like our hearts, they, um, they surround our lives and our hearts, and they're like the water and the carburetor. The other stuff in our lives chokes out Jesus and Jesus, chokes Jesus out of our lives. So this month, we learned a lot of things about what tractors are used for. Farmers buy all kinds of equipment um, that enable tractor to do different things. I mean, at home, I, my dad had a small economy tractor, and he had a wagon, and he had a snow plow, and he had a, yes, he had a mower on it, and he had a plow, and he had a, a potato planter and a potato digger. Obviously, potatoes were a, a, a good thing in our family. Um, so we have, you have different things, that, um, different equipment, and they do lots of things. So um, if we want to learn more about tractors, we can go to a tractor show. It's kind of like a car cruise where you go to look at cars, only you, well, yeah, you go to look at tractors. Um, I mean, and just think how cool that would be to look at all the different tractors and, and things. But many of those tractors really they, some of them don't really work. They're just for show. Or some of them, I mean, can drive down the road, but they wouldn't do much in your, on your farm. Um, so it's kind of like they're, they're all show and no go. It's kind of the same as a lot of the tractors at tractor pools. There are different classes, and some of the classes are for regular farm tractors that actually work, but others are modified. And again, they ride on the, you can drive them, but they don't do much on a farm. And a lot of them, they just take off and go, and they're done. Um, because their engines blow something, maybe a carburetor or something. And so they can't, they're, they can't go anymore. So they have lots of speed and they have the ability to pull, but again, they're all show and no real go. Most tractors are built with a purpose. And that purpose is to plow the ground, to plant seeds, to harvest crops. In our scriptures, we read that we weren't created just for show, right? We were created to do and to go and to share Jesus' love. We see a lot of Christians wearing their crosses, carrying around their Bibles, quoting scriptures, but when it comes to actually living out their faith of Jesus in their lives, they're all show and no go. We come to church and they put on their Christian look, whatever that is, and then leave church and forget about Jesus till the next week or the next time they come to church. With Jesus in our lives, we are no show and all go. We are created to bear fruit. We are seeds who hear the word and then called to be farmers because the harvest is plentiful. Adam Hamilton says the harvest is every person positively impacted by you by me, by us. So as followers of Jesus, we are meant to sow seeds and to produce a harvest. Jesus, and then as Jesus' farmers, we're to go out and harvest the crops. So what does our harvest look like? I'm going to read one more scripture, and it's in Matthew 9, beginning with 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So we use a 
tractor to harvest the wheat. The wheat combiner cuts off the heads of the plants, shakes the kernels out of the heads and separates the kernels from the other plant materials. The kernels are moved into the grain truck and the other stuff is spread back out on the fields. And then the grain is deposited into this truck that goes to um, the grain elevator for storage. And then eventually it's sold to those who are in the market for grain. So the kernels of wheat are small, kind of like my marigold seeds, although they're smaller than my marigold seeds. You plant one kernel of wheat and it grows a stalk. And from that stalk, you can have anywhere between 20 and 50 little kernels. The harvest is plentiful. And then Jesus said to his disciples, but the workers, the workers are few. All around our country, we can see the help wanted signs. Have you gone a week this year and not have seen a help wanted sign? Probably not unless you just stayed in your house. Um, but I'd like to share um, from an article from 2015, Ivy de Jesus wrote in um, Penn Live. She wrote about the um, migrants, migrant workers in Adams County in Pennsylvania. Adams County, um, in Adams County, the apple harvest is plentiful, but workers are few. Adams County is, um, they say, is the largest producer of apples and peaches in Pennsylvania, the sixth largest producer in the nation. Kind of hard to believe, I never realized that. Katie and David Peters owns Peters Orchards. They need about 125 pickers to harvest the apples grown in their orchard. That's a lot of workers. They're hard to find, especially in today. So generations ago, and I even think about this, you know, we didn't start school till after Labor Day because you had to help with the harvest, right? A lot of kids had to help harvest. So generations ago, families, or sometimes it said they families would keep their kids from school until the apple harvest was over because they needed every hand on deck to pick those apples. Today, the apples are picked by men who are migrant workers. Without these workers, the orchard owners would not be able to harvest their apples. Katie Peters said, if it weren't for migrant workers, we wouldn't have fruit. We need them. The work can be physically demanding. To pick apples, a picker gets up at, oh, dark in the morning as the sun is coming up, straps a harvest bag, on the shoulder and proceeds to pick each apple one by one. I don't know, probably some of them are good and can do two by two, I don't know. But, but um, they've tried automated harvesting to pick apples, but it hasn't really worked out too well. So we go with the, so they continue to be harvested by hand. So in a little more than an hour, pickers can fill an empty crate of apples. And they pick from sun up to sundown until the apples are picked. And then they go to the next farm and the next farm. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The harvest is every person positively impacted by us. We are not a big church. We're the few. And yet we are all still called to the, heart, to the fields to harvest each and every day of our lives at work or at home or wherever we are, at school. Jesus walked through the countryside and villages, and he had compassion on all the people that he saw. He looked at the people, and he helped them in their needs as best as he could, but there were still people who needed help. And so he said, the workers are few, and he sent then his disciples and followers out to positively impact the people that they came in contact with, because Jesus couldn't do it all himself. So we can't do it all ourselves either, but we can do what we can. So think about ways that you have positively impacted other people. The harvest is plentiful. This summer we've been following Jesus' example and teachings by harvesting in the fields. And we have marched for pride. We have participated in Vacation Bible School by helping children to, to make a craft that reinforced the lesson they were learning in the Bible. We participated in the harvest on our mission trip as we packed bags of fresh fruits and vegetables for people with cancer and AIDS so that they could have good, uh, healthy meals. 
We cut up vegetables for meals for people in need and help package food in containers for school children so that they could have food this summer. We participated in the harvest as we handed out fresh fruits and vegetables to all those in line for food at Martha's table. And, and it seemed like the line just kept coming. And it was closed at for something and there were still a few people that we continued to help. We showed compassion as we played with the children at the women's shelter. We positively impacted people who received the desserts that we donated to for Meals on Wheels. We participated in this community harvest meal at Evan City National Night Out. We participated in the harvest at Butler County Food Distribution. And we may have even positively impacted someone by playing handbells Tuesday night at, um, at playing the national anthem at PNC Park. The pirate parrot wanted to use my handbell, and so I graciously gave it to him so he could ring it. Or she, I don't know, whatever. I don't know her sex, but he or she could use it. With every smile, every word of encouragement, we are the good seeds persevering and producing a good crop. We are the farmers riding on our tractors, harvesting in the fields, positively impacting those around us. Amen. Seven times in the book of Psalms, it says that we should make a joyful no <clears throat> noise unto the Lord. So we would like to begin today with the ballad of Pastor Lisa. Come in, huh? Come and listen to my story about a pastor named Lisa. Poor mountaineer, barely kept her family fed. And then one day she was shooting at a possum, and out of a tree come a bubbling crude. Molasses, that is. Sorghum. Pancake syrup. Well, the first thing you know, old Lisa's a hundred air. And the kinfolk said, Lisa, move away from there. Said, Butler County is the place you ought to be.
I invite you now to stand and join with me in our prayer of dedication for our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful. We hear the call to come and bring in the harvest. We bring forth our offerings and ourselves to be used to spread the good news of God's love. Amen. as God continues to plant us the seeds into good soil and let us go forth riding on the tractor with the Lord of the harvest and may the Holy Spirit be with us and live within us and help us to harvest the crop.
Amen.